First of all, then, mate, thanks for coming on. Um, and I'm going to start the same way that I started with everyone else. Can you just uh, tell me a little bit about your background and sort of how you got into rugby? Yeah, so, I mean, I suppose to some people I might have been a bit of a late start. Uh, I didn't actually start playing rugby until I was in year seven in Bramout Comp. And then um, started playing, loved it, loved all the physical side of it. And then started playing for RTBs Evervale then at the time, junior side. Um, played for them for a couple of years. My brother then got picked up at like an athletics meet because he was sprinting and doing really well. And the best team around was Abergavenny at the time. So he started playing for them. I was playing for RTs. And then we both ended up playing for Abba then. Dom was in the Dragons Academy then. And I went on to Abergavenny Youth. Um, went to Dragons 18s. Um, Went on to RTB's youth then the year after and then got picked up by Evervale and then been with them ever since, really. Yeah, and obviously you met, you mentioned you've been involved with Ebu for a while then. What does sort of the club mean to you? Oh, honestly, buddy, it just means everything to me, like being from Evervale as well. You know, uh, I know most of the sport is on a first name basis. You know, we've had some great success over the past couple of years and to be honest, you know, the calibre of coaches we've had come through the club, if I hadn't been exposed to that level of coaching, I wouldn't be sort of half, half as sort of knowledgeable about the game or half as good as a rugby player as I am now without those coaches' input. And we've had some unbelievable players as well, people like Chunky, um, who I've been able to learn off coming through the club. So oh, I pretty much owe everything with regards to my rugby career to have avail. And I suppose not only that, I mean, even things like job interviews, I always talk about rugby, you know, my university interview, I talk about Ebervale, you know, so it's been, it's done so much for me, not only on the field, but off the field as well. So, you know, it means a huge amount to me. Going off on a, a tangent then, I'm, I assume, would I be right to assume you did pharmacy in, in uni? Yeah, so did um, yeah. pharmacy in Cardiff. Um, yeah, cool. how was a how was a uni crack like? Oh, it's brilliant, man. Yeah, it's four, four of the best years of my life, I think. Especially the early couple of years, I wasn't really um, in the start. Like obviously, Chunky was here at that time. Yeah. My first couple of years of uni, so Chunky was the main starting hooker. I pick up a bench spot every now and again. So I played a lot for the uni in my first two years, and that was just brilliant experience for me. And um, we were in the sort of Prem, I think Prem A, they called it then, which yeah. is like the top tier of uni um, rugby. So you play places like Hartbury and you play Loughborough and people like that and Exeter. So, you know, you're exposed to a good standard as well. The coaching was decent. The boys, though, was the best thing. You know, Wednesday nights in Cardiff, you can't beat it really. So, yeah, it was brilliant for me, brilliant experience. And, yeah, I recommend it to anyone, really. Yeah. And then going back to, to Ebu then, I just wanted to touch on, obviously it's been a hard time for everyone through COVID and obviously not having rugby, but what does the club mean to the community around Ebu? I think it's sort of like a, like a focal point really in Ebu Vale because obviously, unfortunately, like many Valley towns, the town centres, town centres are dying a bit, to be honest, because you've got, you know, the retail parks and you shopping centres which take a lot of business away from uh, town centres in the valley so having something like a successful rugby club right in the heart of the town really drags people in and pulls people together and gives that sense of community I mean especially Evervale the supporters they're like another family they all you know trying to meet up whenever they can organise trips have drinks together after the game you know, so they're a real tight knit community, and you know they love the boys, they love the club, and they're the best support in the league, in my opinion, definitely. Yeah, the other way then, how much do the supporters mean to to you as a club, and how much do they sort of like spur you on through the through the hard times and the good? Yeah, I mean they're massive for the boys. You only got to play places like Llandovery away or Camarth and Quinns away, and you know no disrespect to land every they probably got two men and a dog watching them and then two buses turn up from Evervale and screaming their head off so you know if they can you know take time out of their day and take money out of their pockets to come and watch us it puts pressure on us then to put on a bit of a show and to front up you know regardless of where we are 
so yeah, they mean the world to us. I mean, when you're struggling, you know, in dying minutes of a game or you're going down for a drive to score five metres out and you can just hear the crowds going absolutely crazy behind you, especially at Eugene Cross Park on our bank side. You know, you struggle to hear the line-up call half the time because, you know, they're so loud, but it just, yeah, gets you right up for it. And obviously, um, Ebu returned to rugby last week, playing against Brecon in a friendly, and you've got a few friendlies lined up. You've got, like, London Scottish, Cardiff Mets, who obviously there's some real tough tests in there. Um, how much are you looking forward to the return of rugby and how much did you enjoy uh, getting back out there on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, it's been great. I mean, Saturday, sort of any got in touch with me probably Monday before and said, you know, we've got an opportunity here to play a game on Saturday. And that was it. Then. I was like, okay, Christmas, Christmas Eve, do you know what I mean? And that was on Monday. So it was just amazing to be back out there with the boys. But it was crazy because we were only probably there. You know, we do the standard stuff. You know, you meet up before, get on the bus. But as soon as you get the changing rooms, it was like we'd never been away. It was just everything just clicked back into the way it was, which was great. And, you know, the boys played really well. We, we did some really good stuff. Um, I thought we scored a couple of nice tries. So, yeah, I mean, we have been training quite a bit. So we would expect that. And, you know, Breck and Arndt sort of up to our standard in rugby probably, but they did give us a real good test. I was in bits on the Sunday, you know, 18 months out and then playing sort of 55 minutes, something like that. I was in bits. So, you know, we know that's a good starting point for us. And, it's going to get a lot more physical as we go through those games because, like we said, we've got some real tough opposition lined up. So it's only going to be good for us. Yeah, you mentioned you'd done a little bit of training. Um, and I just wanted to touch on, obviously, Ed's come in from Sale Sharks, hasn't he? The s &C guy. How important is that going to be to you to sort of um, making you like a fitter, faster, stronger team? No, I mean, it's been brilliant. I mean, Ed is super professional. You can tell he knows exactly what he's doing and he's been in a professional high performance environment before and um yeah it's, it's been a nice sort of um exposure really to what a professional um training session would be like and you know he's, he's really good like that and he's sort of helped the coaches as well with, with regards to fixtures and rest time and training after people have played x amount of minutes you know lightening the load for them so we don't pick up as many injuries so his experience in that side of things as well has sort of been invaluable. I think he's just going to keep coming into his own the further we get through the season. Because like you say, that, that experience with that professional environment is just going to be invaluable at our level. So yeah, he's been a, a real strong addition. And obviously, it's not just off the pitch that um, made additions as well. There's been a few new boys come into the team as well. Um, how have they settled in and how much are you looking forward to seeing them like in the league environment? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, the recruitment sort of um, team, so people like like Darren Ben, Woodsy, Louis, you know, Gare, all those boys who were looking at the talent we could possibly bring in, I think they've done a fantastic job. I mean, the strength and depth you've got in some positions is just, you know, we're the opposite end of the spectrum to where we probably were last year. And that's probably a good sort of reason why we were sort of towards the bottom of the table. But... You know, this year, I mean, you look at flip, you look at like back row, back three, scrum half, you know, tight dead. This just strength and depth there that we haven't had for probably since we won the league. And like you say, boys like Dav Howells, who's obviously had a brief spell with the club, but is now coming back. Yeah. He's fitted in really well because he knew most of the boys from the last time he was here and he really enjoyed his rugby last time he was here. And I think he knows he's going to get a good crack of the whip here and he's going to get plenty of ball and hopefully lots of open space so he can do what he does best and make people look silly but you know there's, there's lots of boys like you know Tojo uh, Jordan Thomas who's coming from Pony Paul look really sharp on the weekend and then you've got other boys who've been in the club for a while who are stepping up I thought Ethan Phillips was fantastic on Saturday you know he looked really a couple of classes above the opposition, you could tell that he was a premiership standard player playing against the Division One team. You know, he stood out that much. And then you still got the core really of the boys who've been there a long time, you know, boys like myself, you know, Rob Seven Oaks, Lance Randall, Lewis Young, Di Jones, Reese Jones, you know, boys who've, who've got plenty of experience to sort of help these younger boys through. And the boys over the bridge look, look sharp as well, even though they haven't not all of them have had an opportunity yet, you know, looking forward to see how they go. But yeah, it's just all positive at the moment, really. And the boys are buzzing, to be honest, to get some game time in. 
Yeah, and obviously I, I don't want to touch too much on the not last the season before COVID. Obviously, it wasn't the best season for Ebu, but it was sort of a transition season. And how much do you think you, that you'll improve going into this competition now in September? Yeah, I mean, sort of, the, the, so it wouldn't even be last season now, would it? But the last season that we played then um, was sort of a time for the club to sort of consolidate a few things, you know, write off a load of debts and, and just put ourselves in a better position moving forward. Realistically, I don't think we would have been relegated if the season did play out to its to its end. Um, but like you say, that the the place we're in now compared to the place we were in at the end of the last season we played, it just pulls apart, you know, on the opposite end of the spectrum. Is I say the talent there, the coaching that's there, everything, you know, even even looking towards some, some new facilities that might be on the horizon and stuff like that, you know, it's just we it just pulls apart. And um, obviously you've taken over as captain for next season then. Um, what did it mean to you to be a like captain your hometown club? Meant everything like, you know, when when once you rang me and asked, you know, as quick as yes, I've said in my life, it's just no brainer for me. You know, I know what the club's about, I know the the history of the club, I know what it means to the supporters, you know, and I just you know feel immense amount of pride every time I put that jersey on. And even more so now I'm captain, and it's just sort of reiterated to me really that I do need to sort of set standards and lead from the front and just sort of be a, a good example to the younger boys in the team and just make sure I'm keeping on to the boys who've been there a while so we don't let any standards slip this year. And obviously you've played under some great Ebu captains yourself, like Damien Hurd, Ronnie Kynes, um, Ashley Sweet as well, obviously, who's just moved on. Um, are they sort of people that you look up to and sort of you want to you want to sort of emulate them? Uh, I mean, I definitely look up to them all. They've all been great captains and they've all helped me massively since I've been at Everville. You know, and I know if I ever had any sort of captaincy worries or questions, I could bring any one of them up and they'd all give me some great advice. But um, I don't think I'm going to try and be like any of those boys because, you know, we all got different leadership styles. We all yeah. think differently on the pitch. And we all play different positions as well. So we've got different responsibilities and things like that. So I think I'm just going to do it how I think it should be done um, and not try and copy anyone else really and then and see how it goes. But like I say, if, I know if I ever got any problems or questions or whatever, I can ring, you know, Sweetie, I can ring Ronnie, I can ring Hadi, I have no problem. Maybe they there to listen and give me advice. So it's been great having those boys as sort of um, mentors really. Yeah, obviously, you mentioned like your leadership style then. What sort of leader are you? Are you someone that sort of like likes to lead from the front and set examples? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I don't like to talk too much, to be honest. I'm not someone who I, I wouldn't want to talk at the end of training, every training, because, well, number one, our trains are running late at the moment. You know, <laughs> we train for like two and a half, three hours. And at that point in the session, all the boys are thinking about the hot shower and some food. Like, so they're not going to listen to a word I say. From experience, so I don't tend to talk in training too much. Um, you know, if if we're gonna if I'm gonna talk at all, it'll be just before the game, or if there's something I think is absolutely necessary that needs to be said. But I'm not gonna talk for the sake of talking because I'd like to think when I talk, the boys are gonna listen type of thing. And um, yeah, that sort of ninety percent of my captaincy really will just be trying to lead through my actions more than anything else. And obviously the Prem Rugby Cup fixtures were put out uh, this morning. Uh, so it's Murtha up uh, first up for you. Uh, have you spoke to a few of the boys about that already? Have you been to be honest, a chat? Yeah, to, to be honest, um, Benny sent them to me first thing this morning. And then um, he sort of said he, what he wanted to put in our WhatsApp or whatever. So I haven't really had a chance to speak to many of the boys about it yet. But, um, you know, that, that first game, Murtha away... You know, we've had a couple of real, real close games against them in the past. Um, they've always been quite entertaining, really physical, but I think we are due a win on them. You know, we've had a couple of last minute um, decisions or, or last minute tries that have sort of took the game away from us. So, you know, we'll be chomping a bit for that one on the win on the 18th. You know, it's already in my calendar, ready to go. So, just can't wait now to get there, get up there and um, get going. Yeah, it's obviously a really good opportunity, isn't it? To, obviously, if you beat Merthyr away first game up, then you sort of put a real 
like mark her down for the league then and you sort of say that like Ebu are here and we're not like messing around. Um do you have any ambitions for the season? Have you spoke about sort of where you want to end up or is it just sort of enjoy your rugby again, obviously, because we've been missing it out um, and sort of just do the best you can? Uh, I mean, our ambition will be to win every game, you know. Like, we don't make no problems about that. Like, like we've already talked about the recruitment we got the club on and off the field, um, you know, uh, has put us in a place where we should be challenging for titles you know but i'm not going to make any bones about that at all you know we should be looking to win everything so um that'll be my objective when we get back together to league fixtures if we can win every game obviously i don't i think it goes up saying that none of the boys are going to take anything for granted anymore because you know it's like Fudzi, you know he's been a prem coach now for as long as the premiership's been about i think and he went from, you know, doing that every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday to sitting on the sofa for 18 months, not being able to do anything like. So when someone like that tells you, you know, we got to, we can't take anything for granted, you listen. And I think none of the boys are going to. So we'll just be looking to enjoy every moment. But at the same time, we do want to win games. We're not going there just to take part. We're going there to win. And obviously we spoke about sort of, how COVID affected rugby with not having rugby in 18 months or whatever it was. But how did COVID affect you in your personal life and in your job? Well, uh, you know, I'm a pharmacist, so it just made my work more busy, to be honest with you. Um, we just had more people through the door because, you know, GPs weren't seeing as many people or whatever, so they came to us instead. So my workload went up, but I worked for a really good company. They support me really well, so that's great. And off the back of it now, we do a lot more a lot more services with COVID. So we do like COVID testings. I'm doing a COVID vaccine clinic on Friday. So, you know, I'm busier, but um, I'm working for a good company. So we're sort of embracing it, really. Yeah. And um, what have you been missing the most about rugby then? Is it sort of the competitive environment or is it like being around the boys? A bit of everything, really. I mean, you miss the games. You miss that sort of competitive outlet and that outlet for your aggression and, you know, the, the physical acts aspect of the game, you miss that. And then you really miss, you know, just spending time with the boys, whether that be sort of changing rooms before a game, changing rooms before training. You know, we have a soup club on a Thursday where everyone gets together for a fine session, you know, stuff like that. Just being around the boys is, is probably what I've missed the most. And obviously with the way the COVID was, with social distancing and you know, caps on numbers of people that could meet that, it was, it was impossible for us to get anything together so you know hopefully now on the seventh everything gets lifted and we can have a few good sessions to make up for the time loss and then a bit about you then to finish off and then there's a little teammates bit as well so first of all did you have like a rugby role model growing up uh i used to well i just used to like all the real big physical hookers you people like kevin mialamu bismarck dupesi andrew hall Hugh Bennett is a local boy, so he was a big rugby idol for me. Um, he obviously was an amazing player. He's now sort of SNC coach with, with Wales. So, yeah, people like that. Um, I just like the people who really got stuck into everything. Really. Yeah, and what's your favourite things to do outside of rugby? Uh, I fancy myself as a bit of a pit master, barbecue king, to be honest with you. So, There's a few of them at Abu Mind, isn't there? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ross Jones, he's gone now, unfortunately, but he was the other big one who sort of, me and Ross talked for ages about different ways to cook meat, smoke meat, whatever, but um, so I'm going to miss him a lot, really. Um, and then you obviously got Oxy then, who um, butchers everything for you and drops her off to training, so that's unbelievable. But yeah, I like my cooking, uh, barbecuing, uh, travel has been a, is a massive one for me, which has been crap with COVID, because I like to go to all different places I can and, yeah. and see what's out there which we haven't been able to do which is a crap but hopefully be able to get back to doing that again now shortly but yeah you know that and rugby really that's yeah and do you have like a go-to karaoke song? Oh, I've got a couple I think I like a bit of Tenacious D uh, always go down pretty well in the karaoke uh, Sweet Caroline anything by the phonics or Chili peppers, you know, just 
I, I don't mind doing a bit of DJing, to be honest. I do the tunes before a game. I don't mind chucking the speaker on the bus at the back. Yeah. Uh, on the way home as well, so I don't mind the music either. What's their sort of tunes before the game then? Is it a mix to cater for everyone? or? Yeah, it's got to be. Otherwise, you have people like Oaksy crying, and the <laughs> you know, ACDC on, or Metallica or something like that, because you've got too much rap in there for the younger boys. So it's a bit of an eclectic mix, but there's something to suit everyone on there. Yeah. And then to finish then, it's a little uh, teammates round. So who never pays for a round? Uh, well, Ross Jones would, would never come out for a round, so he would never be able to pay for one. But at the moment, probably Daniel is probably the tightest. He could, he could peel an orange in his pocket, I think, hopefully. There's been a few shouts for Daniel, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's the worst drinker? Oh, Ethan Phillips, every day of the week. He only got a look at the pint of um, beer red and he's gone. Who's the feistiest? Feistiest. My brother probably fancies himself. Dom, he's pretty feisty, like, especially if you tell him how big his nose is. He gets to back up then, so yeah, probably my brother to be fair. And who's the scariest? I find Dan Hill's lack of personal hygiene pretty scary. Um, and his breath is, is very scary as well if you get too close. That's been the best thing about COVID, really, is he has to wear a mask. So um, we'll go for Dan Hill's lack of personal hygiene as, as being scary. And lastly, then, who's the funniest? Guy Jones is hilarious, especially after a couple of drinks, you know. You put 50 pence in him and he'll go all night, so... He's the entertainer of the group. He's someone you need on a social 100%. So, Guy Jones.